And now, Chapter 25, Devastating Rainfall in Vrindavan. When Indra understood that the sacrifice offered by the cowherd men in Vrindavan was stopped by Krishna, he became angry and he vented his anger upon the inhabitants of Vrindavan who were headed by Nanda Maharaj, although Indra knew perfectly well that Krishna was personally protecting them. As the director of different kinds of clouds, Indra called for the Sambartak. This cloud is invited when there is need to devastate the whole cosmic manifestation. The Sambartak was ordered by Indra to go over Vrindavan and inundate the whole area with an extensive flood. Demonically, Indra thought himself to be the all-powerful Supreme Personality. When demons become very powerful, they defy the Supreme Controller, the Personality of Godhead. Indra, though not a demon, was puffed up by his material position, and he wanted to challenge the Supreme Controller. He thought himself, at least for the time being, as powerful as Krishna. Indra said, just see the impudence of the inhabitants of Vrindavan. They are simply inhabitants of the forest. But being infatuated with their friend Krishna, who is nothing but an ordinary human being, they have dared to defy the demigods. Krishna has declared in the Bhagavad Gita that the worshippers of the demigods are not very intelligent. He has also declared that one has to give up all kinds of worship and simply concentrate on Krishna consciousness. Krishna is invoking the anger of Indra and later on chastising him is a clear indication to his devotee that those who are engaged in Krishna consciousness have no need to worship any demigod, even if it is found that the demigod has become angry. Krishna gives his devotees all protection and they should completely depend on his mercy. Indra cursed the action of the inhabitants of Vrindavan and said, By defying the authority of the demigods, the inhabitants of Vrindavan will suffer in material existence. Having neglected the sacrifice to the demigods, they cannot cross over the impediments of the ocean of material misery. Indra further declared, These cowherd men in Vrindavan have neglected my authority on the advice of this talkative boy who is known as Krishna. He is nothing but a child, and by believing this child, they have enraged me. Thus he ordered the Sambarta cloud to go and destroy the prosperity of Vrindavan. The men of Vrindavan, said Indra, have become too puffed up over their material opulence and their confidence in the presence of their tiny friend Krishna. He is simply talkative, childish, and unaware of the complete cosmic situation, although he is thinking himself very advanced in knowledge. Because they have taken Krishna so seriously, they must be punished. And so I have ordered the Sambartic cloud to go there and inundate the place. They should be destroyed with their cows. It is indicated here that in the villages or outside the towns, the inhabitants must depend on the cows for their prosperity. When the cows are destroyed, the people are destitute of all kinds of opulences. When King Indra ordered the Sambartic and companion clouds to go to Vrindavan, the clouds were afraid of the assignment. But King Indra assured them, You go ahead, and I will also go riding on my elephant, accompanied by great storms, and I shall apply all my strength to punish the inhabitants of Vrindavan.
Ordered by King Indra, all the dangerous clouds appeared above Vrindavan and began to pour water incessantly with all their strength and power. There was constant lightning and thunder, blowing of severe wind, and incessant falling of rain. The rainfall seemed to fall like piercing sharp arrows. By pouring water as thick as pillars, without cessation, the clouds gradually filled all the lands in Vrindavan with water, and there was no visible distinction between higher and lower land. The situation was very dangerous, especially for the animals. The rainfall was accompanied by great winds, and every living creature in Vrindavan began to tremble with the severe cold. Unable to find any other source of deliverance, they all approached Govinda to take shelter at his lotus feet. The cows especially, being much aggrieved from the heavy rain, bowed down their heads, and taking their calves underneath their bodies, they approached the Supreme Personality of Godhead to take shelter of His lotus feet. At that time, all the inhabitants of Vrindavan began to pray to Lord Krishna. Dear Krishna, they prayed, You are all-powerful, and you are very affectionate to your devotees. Now please protect us who have been much harassed by angry Indra. Upon hearing their prayer, Krishna could also understand that Indra, being bereft of his sacrificial honor, was pouring down rain that was accompanied by heavy pieces of ice and strong winds, although all this was out of season. Krishna understood that this was a deliberate exhibition of anger by Indra. He therefore concluded, This demigod who thinks himself supreme, has shown his great power. But I shall answer him according to my position, and I shall teach him that he is not autonomous in managing universal affairs. I am the Supreme Lord over all, and I shall thus take away his false prestige which has risen from his power. The demigods are my devotees, and therefore it is not possible for them to forget my supremacy. But somehow or other, he has become puffed up with material power, and thus he is now maddened. I shall act in such a way to relieve him of this false prestige. I shall give protection to my pure devotees in Vrindavan, who are at present completely at my mercy, and whom I have taken completely under my protection. I will save them by my mystic power. Thinking in this way, Lord Krishna immediately picked up Govardhan Hill with one hand, exactly as a child picks up a mushroom from the ground. Thus he exhibited his transcendental pastime of lifting Govardhan Hill. Lord Krishna then began to address his devotees, My dear brothers, my dear father, my dear inhabitants of Vrindavan, you can now safely enter under the umbrella of Govardhan Hill, which I have just lifted. Do not be afraid of the hill and think that it will fall from my hand. You have been too much afflicted from the heavy rain and strong wind. Therefore I have lifted this hill, which will protect you exactly like a huge umbrella. I think this is a proper arrangement to relieve you of your immediate distress. Be happy along with your animals underneath this great umbrella. Being assured by Lord Krishna, all the inhabitants of Vrindavan entered beneath the great hill and appeared to be safe along with their property and animals.
the inhabitants of Vrindavan and their animals remained there for one week without being disturbed by hunger, thirst, or any other discomforts. They were simply astonished to see how Krishna was holding up the mountain with the little finger of his left hand. Seeing the extraordinary mystic power of Krishna, Indra, the king of heaven, was thunderstruck and baffled in his determination. He immediately called all the clouds and asked them to desist. When the sky became completely cleared of all clouds and there was sunrise again, the strong wind stopped. At that time, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, known now as the lifter of Govardhan Hill, said, My dear cowherd men, now you can leave and take your wives, children, cows, and valuables because everything is ended. The inundation has gone down along with the swelling waters of the river. All the men loaded their valuables on carts and slowly left with their cows and other paraphernalia. After they had cleared out everything, Lord Krishna very slowly replaced Govardhan Hill exactly in the same position as it had been before. When everything was done, all the inhabitants of Vrindavan approached Krishna and embraced him with great ecstasy. The gopis, being naturally very affectionate to Krishna, began to offer him curd mixed with their tears, and they poured incessant blessings upon him. Mother Yashoda, Mother Rohini, Nanda, and Balaram, who is the strongest of the strong, embraced Krishna one after another, and from spontaneous feelings of affection, blessed him over and over again. In the heavens, Different demigods from different planetary systems, such as Siddhaloka, Gandharvaloka, and Sharanaloka, also began to show their complete satisfaction. They poured showers of flowers on the surface of the earth and sounded different conch shells. There was beating of drums, and being inspired by godly feelings, residents of Gandharvaloka began to play on their tamburas to please the Lord. After this incident, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, surrounded by his dear friends and the animals, returned to his home. As usual, the gopis began to chant the glorious pastimes of Lord Krishna with great feeling, for they were chanting from the heart. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the 25th chapter of Krishna, Devastating Rainfall in Vrindavan.